mug making your own um, template with flowers you grow in your garden. This is actually one of my favorite things to do. So our annual Memorial Day sale got postponed a week. We're going to do it June 3rd now and um, husband's doing okay-ish. He's home from the hospital and uh, we're having home health come in every day and we lucky enough my daughter-in-law's an RN and uh, she's his nurse. <laughs> So that's been pretty awesome. Smartest thing my son ever did was marry a medical professional because he's my wild boy. And uh, boy, did he need a nurse in his life or a doctor. <laughs> anyway, um, so I just went and cut these. I was really hoping, I really wanted to make one of these with my bleeding hearts. And I'm kind of at the end. These were the best ones I could find. So I cut a bunch of... Um, flowers, just different random flowers out of my um, flower beds. And this is what I'm going to show you how to make. I love making these. Of course, if you've been watching me for a while, you know I'm all about nature, wilderness, that kind of thing. And using my own flowers to make um, templates is so, so satisfying. So here's that template, actually. And um, it did crack, <laughs> but still usable. And I need to make a couple more. So I'm gonna show you how to make the template itself. And then I will show you how I do this mug um, using the other template, because this one will have to dry out. So let me go ahead and get you um, turned around so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got all my flowers here. And so I basically just need to build what I want for a design. I'm gonna start with my bleeding hearts because those are the ones I really, really wanted to show. And I'm just gonna randomly lay these. Also, my slab is a half inch. Um, I'm gonna to have to, I found by the other ones cracking that I needed to go a half inch. Um, the bigger stems will crack your slab. So what I want to do is I want to kind of lay very carefully, I want to lay those bleeding hearts down. And I'm not too particular about this, but like, and just crush them as you lay them in there. And I'll do the leaves too. Kind of like um, doing a uh, floral arrangement in clay. <laughs> kind of cool. And I, I'm not particular either about the size of um, slab. The bigger the slab, the more designs I can do or more flowers I can put on. And then I can... Um, pick and choose because this is the size of my pattern for the mug and this will definitely do a few of those. But I could do casserole dishes, I could do plates, I could use it for quite a few different things. So let's see, I got another bleeding heart here so let me go ahead and get it in here too. And just carefully, these things are so delicate. But what's really neat about doing it this way is that they come out of the kiln looking delicate too. See, I mean, look how delicate that looks. And this was just, um, I just watered down under glazes and put them in there and then I've got clear and I've got Jess's Chung Blue on the inside of this one. Okay, now I just get a play with um, 
what I want to do. Some flowers are going to be a little harder to put in, obviously. But actually, I wonder if I can. There we go. If we do it this way, I can get. This is an all allium. Kind of looks like a gigantic um, dandelion. And then I've got some phlox for a little bit more delicate flower. And I have found with these geraniums, it's easier if I just go ahead and cut the flowers off. Maybe don't um, <laughs> have all your seed pods. Don't cut them over the piece. And then I can put these just randomly. As thin as these petals are, um, they actually really show up. Those are geraniums there. It's amazing how much detail you can actually get. By doing this. Yeah, come on. Go down. Be immortalized in clay. I know a lot of us out there garden because, you know, why not? I mean, I, you want your, most of the potters I know garden <laughs> or at least do flower beds. Let's see. Let me do some more of the flux. I'm going to come over here and do this side here. You're basically making a landscape with your flowers, which is super cool. I want to get some of these petals all the way out. Get some going sideways and even some of those seed pods. And I did do some lobelia, so since I cut it, we'll roll it in there. I really won't know exactly how this will look until um, until I make the mug and fire it. And just like um, when you're putting under glazes on, it's um, or when you're doing transfers, the first layer is will re be the top layer. Let's do some more of these guys. And you see how you can get really carried away with this. <laughs> Have a lot of fun with it. I want to put some more leaves down in here. 
the more full I can make this. I mean, it can get muddied just like, you know, overdoing anything. But um, it also gives me a lot of uh, area to do different things with. Okay, so I'm just going to go over it one more time just to make sure I've got things where I want them. And I actually might take like some of these leaves here. I really like these leaves from the Bleeding Hearts. They're just very, very pretty. And just kind of fill in some areas. So now I get to take everything out. Now, some of the flowers are going to get stuck in. I don't worry about that because this is going to have to dry fairly slow over a um, couple of weeks because I don't want it to warp. So I will sandwich it between two boards and let it dry pretty slow. Let's see, where's my needle tool? Let's see if this will work. And then after these flowers have dried, they'll come out pretty easy. And if they don't, I mean, the little bits that's left <laughs> in there um, will just burn up in the kiln. Ooh, that turned out super pretty. It did go a little deep, though. I kind of want to do this again, though. We're going to hold that one back. But look at the bleeding hearts, how well they turn out. I'm really glad I was able to do this before they were completely gone. I planned to do this a few weeks ago, but my whole life got turned upside down last week. So let's... And a lot of these I think I just might... This is kind of a mess. That's one thing that kind of happens with um, really small flowers. They actually get kind of messy. So what I think I'll do is I'm just going to roll over where I had the lobelia. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Maybe we're going to put in some more flowers. We'll put this in here too. So you just play around with it, you know? You're designing your own little flower bed on your on your slab of clay. Yeah, these petals don't like to come out. <laughs> so I'm going to let that just dry out. Actually, I might want to... I think I'm going to just kind of push that in over here on this side a little bit. Maybe... Make it look like it's a double flower. Just give him give it a full <laughs> a lot of dots. We'll see how that turns out. Yeah, maybe I don't like that. If I don't like it, guess what? Just go back in and roll it again. This clay is pretty soft. And this allium actually is holding up pretty well. Okay, I like that. And then just, you know, 
Maybe I'll do the third one up here. So then I've got this fun little corner. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna let all these petals just kind of hang out and dry. Actually, I wanna get this one out though. This one had the little buds in it. So we'll get that out. And then I am going to take a board And I've got uh, this wear board here is um, sheetrock. And I'm just gonna put a board on top of it to weigh it down and set it aside and let it dry out. All right, so let me clean up my mess and I will we'll make a mug. All right, so here is the one I made last summer. Um, and I've got a slab ready. I've got way too much slab here. So let me go ahead and just cut some that I'll need. So I'm not wrestling with a whole bunch of clay here. So this is, um, Three eighths. This has already been compressed. So I'm just going to kind of choose where I want. All my flowers are right there. So I'm just going to lay it over and then I'm just going to roll it in. And doing this kind of stuff, you're making your own tools rather than. Like, don't get me wrong, I have a rolling pin addiction, <laughs> just like a lot of us out there. But um, you've just made your own unique pattern out of flowers that you grew in your flower bed. And uh, no one else has it. So then I can check to see how my pattern is and if I need to roll a little bit more, I can roll a little bit more. And I'm not rolling really hard. This clay is pretty soft. And I am gonna come in here and uh, this is gonna be the inside of my mug, so I'm just gonna smooth it out now. And I forgot something. Let me grab something really quick. Um, a lot of you heard me talk about sheets, old sheets. When you're done using them for your bed, bring, cut them up and use them out here in the studio. Okay, so let me push this out of the way. Okay, so I have realized from doing this, these, these parts that um, are from the stem I need to come back and just kind of compress them because they will crack on me later if I don't. I found that out. So I'll just spend a little time just compressing where that cracks. I'll have better luck. Okay, so here's, and then this is gonna be my pattern. So, I want to make sure that I'm up above those flowers. Because you've got to think about function and drinking out of this mug. So then I'll just cut across. I am going to do a diagonal here because this is where my joint's going to be. And then move my knife over here, same direction. And you know what? I might want this guy a little longer. This one, well, we just might just go a little bit longer. So probably 
five and a five and a quarter. Just to give me some more clay down there for the tripod bottom. Okay. Cover up my clay because it's starting to get warm. It's weird weather between um we're getting rain every day, so it's humid, but it still heats up. Okay, so one thing I like to do with the sheet is I want to smooth, this is the rim, and so I'm gonna smooth that down with the sheet. And it makes a really, really soft, rounded rim. I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing again on the inside of the mug. Thins it out just a little bit and just gives a nice soft rim. Remember, nothing's going to touch your lips more than the rim of a cup. Okay, so now we're going to put this guy together. So I'm going to slip and score the sides here. And this is right out of the bag. I did not let it stiffen up at all. But you can see what I mean. I might have. I need to compress that some more. I'm going to have trouble. I'm going to have a lot of trouble here. And that's one thing I have to watch for on these mugs. Since the clay is stressed right there. So now I'm just going to put these guys to put it together, my edges together. Move the inside. These to me are just very feminine um, mugs, just very pretty. And you can choose to highlight that seam or choose to blend it. Definitely blend the seam on the inside. Support with your hand on the outside. It's kind of hard doing this upside down. <laughs> I want you guys to see what I'm doing, but it's kind of hard to lean over and see what I'm doing. Looks like I've got a flower right there. And I'll probably address this some more after the mug's made. Okay, and to do a tripod mug, or this one I actually did four feet. Let me show you how I, let me show you the bottom of this mug. So I'll probably do the exact same thing. I actually really like the way that looks. Sometimes the tripod mugs, when you put a handle on them, can get a little tipsy. And then, okay, so here's, Here's my seam. I'm going to basically just bring this together. I've already slipped and scored those. I'm going to bring them together and make the feet. It's a very fun way to make a mug. You do want the feet to be even, so when you're putting them together, try to make them the same size. Looks like this one might have got it a little bit bigger. And I don't join them all the way to the middle. I like covering that middle with something decorative, like a flower, because this is kind of a, this is a flower mug. So 
and then I will just smooth those over and then I will address the inside of this too but you can see how I'm stressing so be careful when you're doing this that if you roll in too much you need to come back and you need to address these little cracks from the pressure of the texture. All right, where's my sponge? And if you'll notice, this is the first time I've introduced any water. And the water will also, I mean, I can smooth out some of those little stress cracks too. But if you'll notice, let's see if we have any in here. Not in there, but I think I've got a few, like I've got a few down at the bottom there um, on the foot. It just adds to it, you know? Okay, so I actually have a stamp. I can find it real quick. This is a hibiscus stamp that I made. So I'm gonna grab some clay. Another reason to make your own stamps for the studio. I mean, that's just a really pretty, you wouldn't think that that would be so pretty, but it just comes out so pretty. And then I just, kind of cut around it and then I'm going to slip and score this guy to push this in and around the feet and that's going to seal my bottom and you can pull my feet out just a little bit too if I need to Come in here with a brush and just go around it. Make sure I don't have any, if I have any slip peeking out, I'll get that. So now I'm gonna turn it up. Be really careful with it. This is what my inside, I hope you can see that. This is what my inside looks like. So I need to address this. So I'm going to make it's actually, you would be better off to let it set up a little bit before you do this. Because this is actually a little too soft. But I'm going to roll some coils. And I'm going to stick them in there. Well, hi. Hey. Dad said the doctor's ready for him and asked me to come out and get you. The doctor's ready for him now? Mm hmm Okay, so had to run the hubby to a doctor, so we're back. And um, I've got, I don't know if you can see them, I've got some coils down in there. And then I'm just going to blend them into those, into the feet. And I will smooth this again once it um, starts drying out some more, just to make sure everything down there is really smooth. I'm not sure if you can see inside there or not. <laughs> 
Okay, so this does need to set up more before I do a handle. I have a whole bunch of these um, terracotta pots that I get for a couple of bucks or whatever, and I use those as rounders just to make sure that um, my uh, the top is round. But if you wanted to, you could also come in here and you could push this out a little bit. Just kind of give it a little bit of a body. I'm not going to push it out much. And then I will let it sit up. And then I'm going to add a handle. So after it sits up for a bit, I will go and do that and I will probably address some of these cracks that happen. They're just surface cracks from the texture. So I'll just go around, just kind of smooth them. All right, so we will be back in a bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull a handle. While we're waiting for that to stiffen up, we'll let the handle stiffen up too. And to pull a handle, I just, I get my hand wet, I get the clay wet, and I just move it back and forth. Just make sure I keep my hand slick. And I do like running my thumb up the middle. I just kind of give an impression of my thumb there. It just makes it a little nicer to hold, just to put a groove in. All right. Get some of that water off of it so it'll dry out a little faster. And then I'll just cut it off and then just set that usually on a bat and I'll just let it stiffen up a little bit. It looks a little silly right there, but a lot of times I will just press it into the bat like that um, so the air can get into it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and attach the handle. It's still probably a little too wet, but <laughs> I actually have to run and go get some different prescriptions because hubby is having an allergic reaction to the antibiotic. So I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to go ahead and enforce it. Before I um, attach the handle, I do want to um, do this to where I've just got my hand here and I'm just lightly pressing that rim out. So think of, you know, when you're drinking out of a cup, this just helps the um, beverage to flow nicer. Also gets it a little bit of a um, shape here at the top. So I'll just hold it against my hand and I've already really softened that up with the sheet. And this is where my seam is. So this is where the handle's gonna go, is right here. And I always put a handle on, if I'm doing a tripod mug like this one, or if I'm doing it with the four feet, I always have the handle on a foot so that it helps keep it balanced. If you had your handle over here, the weight of the handle would turn it over. So that's something that you need to consider too. All right, and then this is just my everyday handle. I'll come in here, chop a little bit of that off. I'm gonna press 
the handle. Okay, hold please. <laughs> I've got someone at my door. Okay, I'm back. Got lots of help today. So everybody's asking me, what about this? What about that? You know how it goes. <laughs> All right, so I'll take the handle and I'll, I'll press it out like this. So I've got something that looks kind of like that. And then go ahead and slip and score this part. Let me see if I can do this face in the camera. I don't think I can. <laughs> I am not that talented. So, and then I already know I'm probably gonna end about there. So we might as well score it too. And I'm going to take my handle, put it right there. Just going to tack it for now. Kind of wiggle it back and forth. Um, Bill Van Gilder has a video. I think I've uh, mentioned it before. He does his handles um, somewhat like this. I've adapted it to what I do. Um, but I really like, I get a really, really good connection and it gives me a little bit of a, a little bit of a flip to right under here that I like. And so I'll exaggerate that and just kind of push it up a little bit. It's not enough to like be in the way of anything. But I just really like the way the handles work on that. And my handle is a little floppy. So I like a two, three finger handle. So how did I do this one? Okay. So let me push this more towards you. Again, this is, you shouldn't do it when it's this wet. So I'm just going to go ahead and push this out. And I'm going to curl this since I did it this way on the other one. And then I'm just going to wiggle and get that just to curl up for me. So score and slip the back of that. And then I'm just going to wiggle it on and I'll take my brush and I'm going to clean all of these joints up get all the slip out of there smooth them make sure they're all smooth and then I want to add on this one I added a little bit there's my little curl and then I added a little bit of decoration. So I want to do that. I don't know, these, these type of um, mugs to me just kind of call for that. They're pretty, they're pretty mugs. So I'll roll myself a little ball and then I'll push that ball up. Kind of make a little, um, actually if you watch the hedgehogs, <laughs> it's the hedgehog ear is what I'm doing. I'm just making something that's like that. So let's see, how many did I do? I did two. So I'll do another one. So just kind of, just a little, little flip. I like little flips. Then I will score and slip this. And this one goes right here at the base. Bring in your little extra little finger tool. Push that in. Keep referring back to the one I made before. Like, how did I do that? <laughs> this 
is how um, each pottery piece ends up being a one of a kind. Because it's like, don't remember exactly how you did something. And then this one just goes in here. Let me add a little bit of... Come in and just kind of press against that handle there. And then, let's see. I did a little ball. Like a little pearl. And I'm just going to stick that. I don't know if you can see what I'm even doing. All these little tiny pieces. I'm just going to push that, try to keep its round shape because I want that little pearl or seed looking thing. Clean up my slip. Any score marks that are still showing. All right, and then this here, I need some more clay. Let's see. I'm going to steal some clay off of this. Oh, no, I've got clay right there. Good. Okay. So this little flower here, it's kind of um, like a uh, lilac, actually. It looks like a lilac. So when I do how I make those, so I get three balls of clay, about the same size. And then I flatten them out. To little discs, little thin discs. Sometimes your edges are going to crack, so just get your finger wet on a sponge. And then I come in and do that. So I'm making that little petal. Let me do that again for you. So do um, take your finger, wet finger, just around the edges. Then I'm going to push this in here like this. And then push that together. So I've got this. These are super fun to make. Super, super simple. And then the way the glaze pulls inside of them. It's just really nice, actually. Now, if you're having a bad day, come make some flowers. All right, so now I've got three of these little guys. I'm going to put them together. I'm actually going to cut the little tip off so that they'll fit better together. And then this is going to be my thumb rest. And then I can also bring in this little tool to help push them down. This makes a fun little extra detail. Just bring my tool, just push them so I know that they're down. Then I'll take another little pearl. And score that. 
I love this scoring tool for it. It has the little tiny teeth and can get into the, some of these really small areas. Okay. You do want to dry these slow under plastic and check them. You, when they start getting leather hard, you're going to want to clean up um, some of these places on here. You know, just go in with your tool and compress. If you're some clays aren't going to do this, B mix will do this. Um, and it's up to you how much, like this one. I didn't clean up any of that. See, you can still see where they kind of split. It didn't go all the way through, of course, but um, it's just up to you on how much you want to fiddle with it. Now I will double check my handle, make sure, because I did put this handle on a little wet, a little wetter than I like. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to round it off with my flower pot. Then I'm going to let it set up and leave it alone. Okay, so that is it for me today. All right, we got a lot more stuff going on. Um, it's amazing how much time you can lose when someone's in the hospital for as long as he was. But he's doing, he's doing much better, so we just need to get him on a different antibiotic because now he's covered in hives. Poor guy, he's just miserable. Anyway, so we'll get him back to weeding my flower beds, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, I hope you um, try this. This is a super fun um, way of making your own designs, you know, your own little um, um, templates, you know, and you could make, you don't have to make just mugs, you could make casserole dishes, you can make pictures, you could, sky's the limit on what you can make with um, these and they're yours no two are going to be the same and uh, no one else will have them so anyway thanks for joining me and next week june 3rd is going to be the studio sale and i'll probably do if we can get everything done i'll do a studio tour and so you can see the lay of the land and why i do what i why things are where they're at and what goes into setting up a studio so that's what I've got planned, but I gotta be fluid right now. So we're just um, gonna do what we can and be grateful we can do what we can. So um, I hope you have a great weekend, this Memorial Day weekend. Um, enjoy your families. And those of you that have served in the military, like um, so many of my family, thank you for your service. And we will see you in the next video. Go get muddy. Ooh.